So, so the thirteenth chapter is uh, Kshetra Kshetra Gyavibhag Yoga. Kshetra is the field, this is the, the open field, and Kshetra Gya, Gya is the Gyan, right, Nyan, the observer, the one who knows that field. Everything that's here, and so right away you start seeing that this is not talking about God or Atma, Jivatma or Paramatma. It's talking about everything that's in front of you, everything. Ya makan, dukan, loa, lakkar, ghoda, gadi, sab kuch. Uh, so kshetra and then the knower of the field kshetra kshetra gya vibhag being able to discern this so this is a chapter that adi shankaracharya had held up saying the knowledge in this chapter is the most useful um, um in a in a way and and it obviously is right i'm, I'm nobody to uh, validate or invalidate but um it's i would say that is one of the most uh, helpful chapters i'm not sure about the most helpful it depends on how we receive it. Um, so, Kshetra Kshetra Givibhag Yog is a Vibhag for a reason like being able to discern that what is temporary, what is permanent, what will last, what will not last, what is real, what is not real, what appears to be, what is real, what is illusion, right? And so, being able to see it with that framing in, in anyone we, we relate to or we deal with. And then in that he goes through various interpretations. It's a long chapter. It's not the longest, but it's quite long uh, chapter because it goes through many iterations. We're not going to go through that because we spend months on it. Mm -hmm. you know? And we have resources where we have all these reflections already saved and YouTube channel and website and <coughs> Facebook and Instagram and all that. So feel free when you join the WhatsApp group, you automatically get information on that. Um, but just as a memory refresher, that it is a pure, dry, just knowledge infused chapter. I, f I struggle to find Ras in it, right? Uh, except right in the middle of such a dry place, there is an oasis when he inserts bhakti in it. Literally, the word bhakti. <laughs> um, in describing, uh, you know, what are the kinds of qualities that. Uh, that that sort of help you to, to process this properly. Acharya, Upasanam, Chayva, Maicha. So, Eki Jagaya Sakaya Gita, Maicha, Ananya Yogena, Bhaktir, Avyabhicharani. This is in Sanskrit. Avyabhichar is adulteration, contamination. Either Udhar Mudalna, Jisikita. No, like, you know, like um, not, not having allegiance to, to one. So, Avyabhichar is. Uh, not like that, which would mean like very, very uh, loyal, single-mindedly, single point in me, is something that in me, to me, cha is an avyabhicharena, very loyally, very faithfully, very devout, devotedly, strongly believing. Just because I don't see it, does not mean that it does not exist. Just because I haven't yet experienced does not mean that it's all a hoax. Because you know? maybe there's a path to it. Just because I haven't reached Falguni Ben's home halfway through doesn't mean that the path is wrong or that it doesn't exist. It does, right? If, you, if I stay at it, I reached. And so that's the idea of Vavicharani, Maicha, An Anya Yogena. Anya is different, many. An Anya is not many. Therefore, one, you know, ananya yogin, and yogin we've talked about, right? welded, connected. Yoga is uniting, being one with, never leaving. Maicha ananya yogena bhaktir avyabhicharani. So it's like from nowhere, this one half a, cent, half, half a verse appears in the 13th chapter in describing various attributes of those who have a chance, have a shot at understanding this whole sort of configuration of the system around us. Essentially, Vivekta Deshi, Lagavashi, Yatavakaya Manasa. Then he says that Vivekta Deshi is like a, those who like solitude, those who, who are not naturally inclined to going lots of parties, lots of social gatherings, lots of dandya dandya. Once a year is fine, once a year is all right. Um, and uh, I mean, we celebrate him anyway, right? And, 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 and dandya and all that. But the sort of the mindset is and okay, where, where do we go next? What do we eat next? What should we wear next? And kal kya banana, parsa kya banana, kis kya party kya? Not like that. We vik the deshi. Actually, the opposite. That even in the middle of a public setting, where can I find my little corner? 
where can I be quiet and think or observe and learn and grow and all of that. So the whole sort of orientation is that of solitude. That's Vivekta Deshi Laghuashi. So basically what we're doing, we're pulling one or two verses from the, each of the chapter and quickly walking along all the way to the 18th chapter today because we've gone into every verse in great details prior to that. Laghu Ashi, Laghu is little, small, Asha, not having big hopes and big dreams. Uh, contrary to the system, it's like, oh, you dream big, you have to have big vision, big dream. And you might achieve it, but then you'll also be stuck in this, in the, in the middle portion, in the Prakriti. Eh, no? So Laghu Asha, you know that song that Madhi sings really well, Dil Hai Chota Sa, Choti Si Asha, you know, uh, Rosa uh, movie. Mein. So, managing, what is it like, manage your energy, manage your vision, manage your aspirations, manage your, seek only that which is necessary, that will get you through. Okay, we're not here, we'd be fools if we're here just to get a bigger house and a bigger house and a bigger house and then drop dead and who knows what happened. Motiva rak, right? Oh, pani bhai ab rak latka di bar jhar, ko latka di ki ab ye inka ghar nahi raha, andar nahi laate pata hai na, terve chodin. Jiska ghar tha, the, the guy worked so hard to get the house. Wo andar tak nahi laate bhaiya. Usko bahar ujhaad pe latka de de, matke mein dal ke. Ke us din baad mein le jayenge karke. So, um, it's foolish to live only for that. And so therefore, lagu asha. Or lots of contacts. Which contacts come in, comes in handy once the pran leaves? There's only one perhaps. So before we leave that, we must contact him, the only one that is always contacted, connected. So always connected, never disconnected. There's only one that is we, that we're always connected with. We're not, don't fool yourself, we're not really connected to anyone else. We have to make an effort for a while to connect with someone, no matter how close, how intimate. So even with our own body, we cannot be fully always connected. We do have to disconnect the hair and the teeth, right? Like all, any the thoughts, the knowledge, the information that we gather, the devices and the possession, everything. We have to apart and disconnect with up to the point of this whole body that until now I identified, I thought it's me. And well, if it's you, then why do you have to leave it? And it's, and so there is only one that is ever connected. And so the real point of human life is to identify that connection. That's where the Gita takes us. And so the 13th chapter, and it is very eye-opening, which is why I think Adi Shankaracharya said, that, wow, this is very powerful. Because it is, it's, just, it's just like, it's brutal in that sense, that it's like, presents it as it is. Yato Vakaya Manas is the last part of that verse, which is like, Vakaya Manas. Vak is Vani, what I'm using right now. Kaya is the body, and Manas is the mind, right? Manasa, Vacha, Karmana, head, heart, and it is aligned. Um, or the thoughts and the speech and the deeds aligning. Uh, but all of them are in control, regulated, moderated, in control, for which you must seek solitude, and isolate yourself and not always dhamma, not always be splashing in uh, lots of public gatherings. And only then you will have a chance to go within, go inward, which is where you'll find the connection. It's already there, the connection. Then you can come out. Once you're fully identified with the, with the, the pran, then you can come out and like go wherever and do whatever. Because, but then you'll never leave that. You'll never forget that. And that is the real security. That is called... Dharma, right? Like identify that. Swadharma nidhanam shreya paradharma bhayava. This appears in the Gita earlier on. That then you can die. Nidhan is death. Then it's fine to even leave the body. There's no fear in it. Until then though, paradharma bhayava. Until then, while we're seeking validation from you, am I not good? Am I like, will you stay in touch with me? Will you come to my party? Will you invite me? You give gifts to each other, or will you give me thumbs up, likes, this, that. Paradharma, like living by others' standards, is bhayava, insecure. It only creates more and more insecurity. Because it takes us away from the truth, from the reality that I'm actually very secure. And when I say I, I, I mean each of us. 
Actually, if you go inside, if you're able to go inside, it's the most secure place. There's nothing can shake you. No calamity, no insult, nothing. No one can shake you. That's how secure you are in this moment. If we could only figure out a way to go inside, then we don't seek any validation or any of that. And so there is a way to understand all this in the 13th chapter, which then I'll be 